This is Questions for Quarantine. Today is episode five, day seven of my fourteen-day quarantine with David Katz. Apologies for the bad sound quality, but luckily we can hear David pretty well. So enjoy this episode. So, for you, questions for quarantine. I'm T, and today I'm joined by David Katz, the CEO and founder of the Plastic Bank, world humanitarian, and just a cool person to be with. I have to admit, I'm probably the greatest fanboy on earth. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being here on the show, David. I love you so much, T. Thank you. Yes. So uh, let's get actually right into uh, the topic because. Um, you know, I'm now in, in, in Vietnam, and uh, I will also explain, of course, a lot what uh, you, what fabulous things you, you guys are doing, and that I can be part of it. But let's go to a, a particular topic which I find quite, let's say, interesting and dangerous. Fact is, at the moment, there's a lot of research and activities also around finding substitute materials for plastic. For example, plastic that dissolves in the ocean. Sounds great. But what is a little bit dangerous about that? What's your opinion? You know, there's a, there's a broad conversation inside of that tea. I, I think that the first thing that, re- that I resonate with when you, when you bring that up is that it isn't funny how we don't want to change. We want someone else to do something different so that we can do the same thing that we've always ever done, which is not be in regard of others. But someone, someone make something different so I can continue doing what I've all Ridiculous. Now, the unintended consequence of finding an additional or alternative material to plastic is that it would further devalue the around 9 trillion kilogram of material that are already on the earth. Almost all the plastic we've ever produced is still here. A very little, small amount has been incinerated and recycled, but almost all of the rest of it is in the environment somewhere. And we're the very moment that we need to increase the value of that material, not decrease it. Can you imagine if we come up with some other you know, inexpensive, viable material that replaces plastic. Well, all 9 trillion kilo will sit in there. It'll, it'll further exacerbate the problem. It would be devastating, really. We're at the very moment where what we need to do truly is reveal it as diamonds and gold in, in the conversation of it all. If every piece of packaging or bottle was really five US dollars or five euro, if we ask yourself, if you, every bottle was five years, how many would you pass by on the street? You'd be collecting them all. So inside of that paradigm really is the solution. It's about revealing the value of the material to such an extent that it's not viewed as waste to begin with. That's the path. That's the long-term path. And if we can do that, and as well simultaneously turn the tap off of virgin plastic, now we're headed towards you know a a viable solution for the world it's not you know for us it's not a world without plastic it's a world without waste and perhaps simultaneously a world without virgin plastic because we don't need anymore and i think this is very very important uh, that many people probably don't don't see i think uh, I'm, i'm simplifying a little bit but the plastic is already there so in a way we shouldn't shame the plastic which is there. It's, it's, it's plastic didn't decide to multiply. It's it's a human uh, thing, and therefore this let's call it plastic shaming also doesn't get us anywhere because as you mentioned, nine trillion. I mean this this number, how many zeros is that? It's already there. Yeah, and uh, that's that's something we really need to give plastic value. And it's there anyway already, right? For sure, for sure. It's, and, and it's, you know, the plastic's benign. It's nothing. It's zero. We vilified it. We make it a story. We create whatever we want. It's our word over it that creates it. I could also look at it and give a word over it and say that that is now the opportunity to end poverty. It's the opportunity to end suffering. It's the ability to really focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I think it's important to be in the consideration that, you know, life below water really won't be solved. You know, the, the, the SDGs are in order from 1 to 17. Number one being end poverty. If you want to solve the other 16, you have to work on solving poverty. And so that's, that's really the area we need to be in. 
So how might I give it word as a creation to end suffering? Well, what if every kilo of material on the earth was 50 cents? Right. It's a four and a half trillion dollar value. It's estimated 500 billion ends extreme poverty in the world. How might we then give word over it and say that, that actually is the the unintended consequence of that was that it actually has been the very deposit of value to end all human suffering. Well, let's create that. That's that's my word. And that's what we live into. And that's what we're creating for the world is a space where we can reveal the value of the material to such an extent that it puts more children in school and ends malnutrition and that's an opportunity to serve all life. Mm -hmm. Probably a too broad a question, but what needs to happen? We have the intellectual capability, we have the technological ability. Why do we still not see that awakening, so to speak? We've been, you know, we've been marketed a convenience. We've been told that we're better only when we're associated with a brand. We're told that we're better when we look a certain way. We're told we're not whole unless our hair is shiny. We're told that we, you know, don't have enough. So let's go purchase more. Mm. And we've been given the identity around around that what that looks like. Uh, and that's 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 a there's a there's a way through that. And I see a new generation emerging that is really focused on on changing that. You know, we're entering what we could easily call a regeneration society, a regeneration economy. What's tipping is a new generation, this, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20 year old that isn't inspired by that anymore. Right. Their association and belonging is to the good that they can create in the world. It's coming. It's not fast enough. Hmm. I see within the next generation, those brilliant young minds are going to commit themselves to work at organizations that provide cause and change and goodness in the world. They're not inspired by owning cars anymore or having fancy things. They want to create change. That's the new bragging right. What change am I creating in the world? Right. And they're committing to buy materials and products that change the world. And they're committing more importantly to work at organizations that do the same. And unless your company is standing forward to repair the damage that's been done, you will not have a competitive advantage. So that's the arena that we're playing in now. I think that the world is catching up. And I'm hoping that the marketing that will catch up as well will help further convince and align those people to do good in the world. That will be a beginning. We also have to change this old, you know, you know, stoic structure of shareholder return first. Definitely. It's really the, it's really, it, that's really what's returned us to where we are. It's this drive for additional profitability to the select few at the top. As it's always been the degradation of the masses for the riches of the few. Yeah. That has to change as well. Yeah. But it's changing slowly. Probably today we won't be able to get into this topic, but I think, uh, just to give some breadcrumbs, I think really we definitely need to rethink uh, uh, our capitalistic way. There needs to be definitely a new form of uh, capitalism as such. And I think what you mentioned earlier in terms of young people creating change, maybe that's a new currency as well. Maybe the currency, the value in our society is the impact you do, the change you create. Uh, of course, not only for yourself, but also uh, for others. Uh, uh, I think really what I, I, I must repeat what you mentioned already, these 50 goals, uh, these 17, they really do follow an order. So yes, we can always talk about how we can efficiently fish out the plastic out of the ocean more effectively. And yes, it's going to be a technological feat, but also totally as long as there are too many people who are poor. Yeah, and we need to address that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of work to be done. And nothing that we need to do is against the laws of physics. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Everything is achievable. Everything that we need to solve all of these problems is already here. It's just the will. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so
Thank you for being here. Let me actually choose and change my virtual background for just one second. So you can see, sorry, the other hand up there is yes. secure. <laughs> you can start by supporting us, scan the code, choose your distribution level, and share the good gospel. Become a follower like me to to be on this great course, uh, David. You know, I'm, I'm really uh, absolutely honored and humble part of this journey. Uh, we love having you here. It's such an important part of the journey too. Thank you, team. Yes, You're a thanks. remarkable person, standing forward for how everyone should be. Yes, and uh, that's that's it for uh, today. Thanks for being yeah. here, David. Until the next episode. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you, team. Speak soon. Bye. Then bye now. <laughs>